Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK, and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how to make my delicious mouth watering pan pizza. It's probably the easiest and the best pizza you'll ever make at home. For a start, it's a no knead dough recipe, so no stand mixer required. It has very simple ingredients and it's relatively quick to make. And I'll also show you how to add an irresistible crispy cheese crust around the edge of the pizza, known as a Frico cheese crust. This stunning pizza will definitely impress your family and your friends. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with making this absolutely stunning pan pizza recipe. Ok, I'll start the recipe by testing that my yeast is alive and well. Add the sugar to the warm water and mix until it's dissolved. Now add your dried yeast and mix that in. I'm using instant, active dried yeast will do too. Always test your yeast before starting any bread recipe. Now set that aside to activate. Right, it's five minutes later and as you can see my yeast is starting to activate. So it's time to make up this very easy no knead pizza dough. Add the mixture to a medium sized bowl. Next add the bread flour to the bowl. Sprinkle the salt over the top of the flour. Ok, now mix that until it all comes together. I like to start this by using the handle of my trusty wooden spoon. Once the bulk of the mixing is done, switch to a bowl scraper and fold it over itself a few times. Make sure you scrape all that dried flour from the sides of the bowl. Once you're happy there's no dried pockets of flour in the mix, lift it out with your bowl scraper. Now add a teaspoon of cooking oil to the bowl and spread it out with your fingers. This will help the dough release from the bowl after the first proof. Don't wipe the oil off your hand just yet. Right, get the dough back into the bowl and with your oily hand form the dough into a ball. Now cover the bowl, I like to use a shower cap for this and we have a good selection of these in various colours and patterns in the website store if you're interested. Now set the bowl aside in a nice warm spot. I normally use the oven with the light bulb on but as the weather is glorious in the UK today I'm just proving mine on the bench. Now set your timer for one hour. Right, that's the time up for the first proofing. And as you can see, it's risen quite nicely. Now using your bowl scraper again, get it out of the bowl. And because we took the time to oil the bowl, it should come out quite easily. Right, to help you handle this quite sticky dough, add a little oil to your hands. Now give the dough a few turns. This is called knocking the dough back. You can be quite brutal with it. Now form the dough into a ball again. Get it back into the bowl, cover it and set your timer for 45 minutes for its last proofing in the bowl. Right, while I'm waiting for that to proof, I'll make the very quick and easy tomato sauce. First, add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to a medium sized saucepan on a medium to high heat. Once that's hot, throw in your onions and fry until soft. Once the onions are cooked, stir in the garlic. Of course you can buy a jar of tomato pizza sauce, but it's nowhere near as good. You get less than half the quantity and homemade is a fraction of the price. That's a no brainer in my book. Next add a half teaspoon of dried oregano, you may know that as oregano, half a teaspoon of dried basil and a half teaspoon of salt and stir those in. Time to add the canned tomatoes. Now 
and don't waste any, rinse out the tin with a little water. Now add around a tablespoon of tomato puree or paste. By the way, this basic tomato sauce is very versatile. You can use it for lasagna, meatballs, spaghetti ball and lots of other Italian dishes. Bring that to a simmer before adding a few chopped fresh basil leaves. Those are optional but it does add a little colour to the sauce. And there's enough sauce there to make three of these pizzas. And that's it, your tomato pizza topping sauce is done. Turn off the heat, give it a thumbs up, add the lid and set it aside to cool. Right, there's a few different pan sizes and brands you can use to make fantastic pizzas in. Whichever one you choose must be non-stick and obviously has to be oven proof with a metal handle. This first one is great for small pizzas. Check out my garlic tear and share video where I use this pan. This large carbon steel pan would be great, one of my all time favourite pans, but the handle is a bit too long for my oven. By far the best pan to use is a well seasoned cast iron pan, like this 12 inch lodge frying pan. And this is the beauty I'll be using today. There's very little prep, just add a tablespoon of olive oil and spread it out. Right, I'll set that aside for now. OK, time's up on this final proof and it's looking wonderful. Using your bowl scraper, turn it out onto the worktop. Once again, add a little oil to your hands. This time just flatten the dough out into a small circle. Turn the disc over and flatten and stretch it out a little more, maintaining the round shape. Now place the flat round dough into the oiled pan. Now start manipulating and stretching the dough a little at a time. If it tightens up, let it relax for a couple of minutes, then it'll be easier to stretch it out again. Try to keep the outer half inch of the dough a little thicker. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. Start the pizza topping by adding some grated cheddar cheese all around the edge of the pizza. And this is what makes that delicious Frico crispy cheese crust. Just slightly pull the dough edge up a little to get the cheese just under the rim. And continue this all the way around the edge of the pizza. Time to start spreading your homemade tomato sauce. This size pizza usually takes around 3 to 4 tablespoons. Don't go right to the edge of the pizza, leave a half inch gap as shown. That simply allows the edge of the pizza to rise a little more. There should be enough sauce left for at least another two pizzas. Just split what's left into two and freeze them. Now spread your grated mozzarella all over the top of the pizza as shown. Try to keep it a little deeper in the middle of the pizza. Incidentally, all of my measurements are for a 12 inch pizza. If you're making a smaller or even a larger one, you'll need to adjust the quantities to suit yours. Right, almost there. Place your pepperoni slices equally spaced over the surface of the pizza. I always use 12. It seems to form a good symmetrical pattern. If you don't like pepperoni, just leave it off and have it plain. For a final touch of flavour, I like to add a good sprinkle of cracked black pepper. No need for any extra salt on this pizza as there's plenty in the cheese and the sauce. And that looks totally amazing already. Now get it into the preheated oven and set your timer for 25 minutes. And while that's baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. 
and by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. When there's 10 minutes or so left, I like to turn mine for even cooking. Once the time's up, carefully lift the pan out of the oven and place it on top of your stove. And as you can see, the base of the pizza needs a bit more colour. Place the pan on a hob on a medium heat for a couple of minutes. This style of pizza making guarantees that you get a perfect crispy base to your homemade oven pizzas every time. And there you go, the bottom is perfectly cooked. OK, get the pan on a wire rack. And using a couple of large spatulas, lift the pizza out of the pan and onto a chopping board. And that's it, this gorgeous pizza is now ready to slice and serve. And doesn't that look absolutely wonderful? As you can see, the base has lots of colour and is well cooked. <laughs> and extremely hot. Right, it's one minute later and I'll try again. Right, time for a taste. Absolutely delicious. I've had pizzas delivered from a well-known pizza franchise not as good as this one. And it's so simple to make. And that Frico cheesy crust is so crispy and amazingly tasty. Gotta try some of that Frico crust. Just listen to that crunch. Really Moorish. I tell you what guys, I'm giving this one a double thumbs up. This recipe is so satisfying and I really hope you give this one a go. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Georgina McDowell, Ian Crossland, Sam Patton, Catherine Anderson, One-Eyed Willie, Sue Dance, Julie Whiting, Linda Schamberger, Brian Long, Richard Archery Reviews, Jens K, Anne Hewlett, Strike Mirror 23960, Kirsty Williams and Wild Will. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.